Hello, I'm Jen Barnaby, and this is the second part in my two-part series on building a simple flow in Apache NiFi. In the first part, we talked about adding and configuring processors. In this part, we'll talk about connecting the processors and running them. Here we have the two processors that we added and configured in the last video. We can see that the generate flow file processor is still invalid because it doesn't have an outgoing connection. If we hover over the warning symbol in the left-hand corner, it tells us that this processor needs a success relationship defined. To add a connection, we'll hover over the center of the processor and drag the mouse from that circle over to the other processor until it's highlighted in green. Then release the mouse and a create connection window will open. This window has a details tab and a settings tab. The details tab shows what the connection is going from and to and lists the relationships that will be included in the connection. For processors that only have one relationship possible, it'll already be checked here and we can see that the success relationship for the generate flow file processor is already checked. Let's look at the settings tab. The settings tab has an optional name field so you can name the connection. By default, the connection will have the name of any relationships that are included in the connection. We also have flow file expiration, back pressure settings, and prioritizers on this tab. For any of these, you can hover over the question mark to see more information about them. Flow file expiration is set to zero seconds by default. That means that flow files will never expire. And this is typically what you want in most data flows because you don't want your data to expire before you process it. However, sometimes data may only be good for a certain amount of time, and this is where you could set that threshold where it'll be deleted if it's a certain age. Another time you might use the flow file expiration is if you're testing your flow and you find that data is building up in a connection and you wanna just simply clear it out really quickly, you could change this to one second, clear out the data, and then come back and change it to zero seconds again. Back pressure is a way to throttle how much data is going down a connection. Some processors take longer to process data than others. So if a feeding processor is really slamming the follow-on processor, this would be a way to slow down the rate of data going down that connection. You can set back pressure by object threshold, in other words, the number of files, or by data size. Prioritizers tell the connection how to prioritize data that's in a queue. If data is queuing up in the connection, this allows the connection to determine which file to process first. By default, the oldest file first prioritizer is in effect, but you can drag a different prioritizer down to the selected prioritizers list to change the priority scheme being used by the connection. We'll leave the default settings and click Add. Now we can see that both processors are valid and ready to be started. They both have the stop symbol up in the left-hand corner. To start both processes, processors at once, I can drag a selection box around them by holding down the Shift key in the left mouse button and dragging a selection box. Now both processors are selected and I can go to the action section of the toolbar and click the Start button here. If I right click anywhere in the open graph and select refresh stats, I can quickly see what the processors are doing by the information on the face of the processors. For one thing, I can see that this log attribute is producing bulletins. I had configured it to produce bulletins at the info level. So when I hover over this bulletin here below the play symbol, I can see the bulletins that are being produced. These are the attributes that this log attribute is logging. Now let's take a look at the information that's being displayed on the face of the processors. This information represents what's happened in the processors over the last five minutes. We can see information about data coming into the processor, data being read or written to the disk, data going out of the processor, and the number of tasks the processor has completed and the total time it's taken to complete those tasks. Let's compare the generate flow file with the log attribute. The generate flow file shows no data coming in. That's because it doesn't have any incoming connections. And in fact, it's generating all of the data itself. It's not reading data, but it is creating the data and writing it to disk. So we can see information there. 
It also has data coming out of it on its outgoing connection, so we can see that. And we can see the number of tasks it's completed over the last very short amount of time. The tasks and time information is really important for seeing how efficiently a processor is working. If you see a processor that's completing only a small number of tasks, but it's taking a long time to do so, that could indicate that you need to configure it differently to run more efficiently. Now let's look at the log attribute by contrast. It does have data coming in because it has an incoming connection, but it's not reading or writing to disk because it's only dealing with the attributes on the flow file which are kept in memory. It doesn't have any data coming out because it doesn't have any outgoing connections. And in fact, we've configured it to terminate the data after it processes it. And the tasks and time is very similar to the generate flow file, showing the number of tasks it's completed in the last five minutes and the amount of time it took to do those tasks. Now let's stop this uh, processor so we can see data queue up in the connection that's feeding it. If we refresh stats, we'll see a number appear here. These are the number, this is the number of files that's queued up in this connection right now. We can also see up here in the status bar the same number, but this is the global number for everything on the graph. So we ha if we had files queuing up elsewhere in our graph, they would be indicated here as well. If we right click on the connection, we can see other options for the connection. We can only view the configuration at this point because one of the processors is still running. You can only change the configuration on a connection if both processors on either side of the connection are stopped. We can see um, more information about the metrics if we select the stats option. This shows the metrics we've been looking at on the face of the processor, but in a graphical format and over a period of longer period of time than the five minute increments. We can also bring the connection to front if it's hidden behind some other connection or object on the graph. And we can click go to source or destination if we want to jump right to that on the graph. And this is really useful if you have a really large flow where you have long connection lines. Now let's go ahead and stop the generate flow file processor and start the log attribute so it can clear out that queue. That's pretty much all there is to this simple flow in Apache NiFi. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.